In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete the Form 2553, the 2553, which is the S Corp election. You can make this election if you are an LLC or a corporation. If you are unsure uh, what the S Corporation election is or why you'd want it, go back to the uh, Small Business University video about choosing the right business entity. We go into it in some depth there as to why you want to be an S corporation. Uh, the S corporation form is a simple form. I'm going to fill it out for you and show you how to uh, answer each of the pieces. And then once you're done, you fax it into the IRS and that's, that's really it. So uh, without a lot of delay, let's jump into the form and take a look. So here is the 2553 form. If you go to Google, you can uh, Google form 2553 and you're going to get this to come up. You, you can fill out the PDF. Uh, this is a, a PDF fill uh, where you can fill in the, the information like we're going to do here and print it out. You could print out the blank form and, and handwrite it if you want to. Uh, the IRS doesn't care. Just make sure it's legible and has all the information and you send it in. When you uh, get the form online, the first page is kind of a just a little bit about information about faxing, uh, if you fax to the, the Cincinnati uh, office. So just scroll past that. And this is the, the first page of the 2553. This is the second page. And then there's a couple other pages here. There's page three and a page four here. We're not going to fill anything out on here. You, you really only need to complete this if you have a special situation, like you've got a fiscal year or you've, you've got a subsidiary, something like that. So all we're going to do is the first two pages. And more than likely, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's all you need to do unless you have a really strange setup. And in that case, you may want to reach out to someone for help with that. But um, on, this, on, on these two pages, a couple of things to note. One... It does have to be signed twice, which is kind of odd for an, for an IRS form, right? The first signature is down here at the bottom of the first page. It has to be signed by um, the officer of the corporation. And then the second page is about listing all the different shareholders, all the different owners of the corporation, and each of them have to sign this, meaning that they each consent to uh, becoming an S corporation. If it's just you or you and another partner, then each of you will sign uh, here and then you send it in. So I'm going to show you how to fill all of this out and uh, it's, it's really easy. The first part up here at the top is contact information for your business. So you're going to put in your business name, your business address, you're going to put in your EIN number. That's very important. You need to have your EIN number before you can do a 2553. We also have a video on how to do on how to set up your own EIN number at the IRS. So watch that before you do this if, if you haven't done that. You need to put the date that you are incorporated. This is the date from the Secretary of State that your LLC or your corporation was formally created. If you go look at the Secretary of State's website, uh, you can find your corporation. You may have those corporate documents and there will be a date when it started. And then, of course, the state whatever state you incorporated it in. So let's fill that information out real quick. Okay, so I filled out Joe's machine shop here and the address, uh, the employer identification number, the date incorporated, and the state of incorporation. Now, let me tell you something about this date of incorporation. The way that the 2553 works is it says that you must file the 2553 within uh, 75 days, within two and a half months, of starting your corporation. So if you started it in January, towards the end of January here, you would essentially have uh, about till the, the middle of maybe the beginning of, of April to have this 2553 done. You'd calculate what 75 days out from January 25th is. If you file this before that time, then it should, in general, unless you filled out the form incorrectly, be accepted right away. But let's say it's six months later that you're watching this video and you're like, oh, does that mean I can't elect? It doesn't. It just means that you've got to um, put a, make a special election having to do with a late filing. And at the end of the video, I will show you something about that rev proc of what to do if you're filing this late. So just keep that in mind. The... Next box here is this box D. It says check the applicable boxes if the corporation 
after applying for the EIN shown above changed its name or its address. So if you've changed your name or address since you started this EIN, you would need to check one of these boxes saying, yes, I changed my name or yes, I changed my address. We're going to leave it blank because this is the same name we applied for our EIN under. Okay, so the next box is box E, and it says uh, this election uh, is to be effective for the tax year beginning on, that's always really going to be the tax year that the corporation started, right? So unless you're in like your second or third year, I'm also going to put here uh, 01 uh, 2516 because that's when my that's when my business started, right? So I'll put in here 01 25 2016 because it wants to know the the first day of the tax year that this be effective for, that's now. So uh, generally it's always going to be here a beginning date of a short tax year that begins on a date other than January 1st. Um, what it's warning you here is um, it's usually something other than January 1st unless you started your corporation on January 1st. So, um, you know, keep that in mind and just be honest here. There's no reason to, to check something else. The selected tax year, this is really easy. Unless you're going to have some goofy fiscal year, you're always going to click calendar year. And the real reason you want to do this is, is because your personal taxes are based on calendar year. So, you want your S corporation based on calendar year two to where they, they operate in the same tax years and things don't get confusing. If you decide to have a fiscal year where uh, it it starts in June 1st and then ends on May 31st, it's going to get really confusing filing your personal taxes, I can assure you. Um, box G here is if more than 100 shareholders are listed in item J, check this box. Um, if treating members of a family as one shareholder, you know, if you've got more than 100 people in your corporation as owners, you probably need to have some pros helping you do some of this. So uh, generally, you're not going to check this box. And then the name or and title of the officer who the IRS may call for more information. Well, let's say that's me. I'm just going to put in my name because I'm, I'm the owner and the IRS can call me if they need to talk to me. So I'll put in 239, you know, 222, 2222, whatever that is. And then Right down here is more about um, if this S corporation election is being filed late. And we'll we'll talk about this some at the end whenever I show you the Rev Proc two. But um, this is where you would give the reasoning for why the S corp election is happening late. So this is the end of page one. We have filled out page one, and uh, at, after you signed it, page one would be done. Now we need to come to page two, and page two is pretty easy. Generally, all we have to do is list the names of the shareholders. So each of these rows is for each shareholder that is a partner or owner in the, comp in the company. So let's say the first one's me, and I'm going to put in my name. Let me just fill all this information out. All right, so I have filled out both owners of my example company. You can see over here, we have uh, my name and my address information, and then my partner's name and address information. These are the boxes where we're each going to sign it, and we're going to date it whenever we sign it. Then it's asking for the number of shares or percentage of ownership each of us has. Well, I own 100 shares, and John owns 100 shares of the company. That means we're 50-50 owners because we each own the same amount. You could put in here, if you wanted to, 50% and 50%, and that would work just as well. It's just whatever way is easiest for you to convey to the IRS who owns how much. If you didn't have a partner, it was just you, well, you would have everything in here and you could put 100% or you could even put 100 shares. And since there's no one else here, that means you own 100% of the shares too um, because you own all of it. Then you'll put in the date acquired. This is the date acquired box. Generally, this is always going to be the date you started the corporation because when the corporation started, the two of you got your shares. And then there's the social security number for each of you. Just enter those. And then the shareholder's tax year ends. Don't be confused by this. Just enter 1231. This means that uh, both of your tax years, because you're individuals, ends on December 31st. So just put 1231 in, 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 this, in this column here. Now that that's done, all you have to do is make sure you've signed here, make sure you've signed here, and then you can fax it to the IRS. Now I'm going to pull up the uh, 2553 instructions and show you where to fax this depending on where you live. Okay, so I have Googled instructions for Form 2553 and this is what comes up. 
And don't be intimidated by the way this looks. This is just the way that all instructions for forms from the IRS look. And it's kind of cool because what you can do is generally all instructions at the IRS start with who needs to file the form, when do you need to make the election, or when do you need to do something. And then later, right down here on page three, is if the corporation's principal business office or agency is located in one of these states, then this is the address you send the 2553 to, or if you want to fax it, here's the fax number. Otherwise, if you're in one of these states here, then you would send it here to Ogden, Utah, or use the Ogden, Utah fax number. So that's it. You're going to take the 2553, you're going to either mail it or fax it to the fax number based on where your corporation exists, and you're done. What happens then is probably in about four weeks, you'll get a letter back from the IRS that says, we have accepted your 2553 and you are now an S corporation. Don't forget to file your 1120S tax return each year, blah, blah, blah. So you're done. Now, I promised that we, I would show you a little bit about what to do if you are filing your uh, 2553 late. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so I'm still on the instructions for Form 2553, and I'm under the section here called Relief for Late Elections. And what it says is that if you're filing this late, meaning after 75 days after the beginning of your tax year when you form the corporation, you can still um, become a, an S corporation for this year, but at the top of the 2553, you must, you must include at the top filed pursuant to Rev Proc 2013-30. And that Rev Proc, what that says is, is it's it's a it's a guidance from the IRS that says if you can't file your 2553 within 75 days, write this at the top of your 2553, provide us why you didn't do this within 75 days. And so long as you are you meet certain eligibility requirements, you can be a S corporation still. And below here are some of the, the things that you must meet. So the corporation um, always intended to be classified as an S corporation um, as of the date that it started or the, the tax year began, and then it continues up here. Uh, the corporation has reasonable cause for its failure to timely file and has acted diligently to correct the mistake. So some of the reasons that we often use are that the um, that we thought the form had been filed previously by uh, another partner or by an associate of ours or by an employee of ours. And when we discovered it had not been, we immediately are filing this late election. You know, that kind of uh, reasonable excuse is is almost always, uh, I've, actually, I can't think of a time when it hasn't worked. The 2553 must be filed within three years and 75 days of the date. So, if you wait five years to do this, then even the late election stuff isn't going to help you. But if, if you discover this within the, the first year, you want it to, to happen, you're well within that three years and 75 days. And the corporation must meet some other requirements here and, and look through it just to make sure you, you, do, um, you do meet the qualifications of all of this. So at the end of the day, if you need to do this late, just write it at the top. And then when you come back over here, make sure you put your reasoning in this section on the 2553. Remember, this is the first page. And I had said, this is where we're going to write some information about why we um, elected late. So just fill in some information here as to why you were not able to file this within the first 75 days. Sign it, have the other guys sign it. Uh, send it in and everything should be fine. If not, you can go back and forth with the IRS a little bit and they will eventually uh, grant you some leniency here. They're not in the business of trying to turn down S corporations necessarily. So that is uh, everything that I have for this particular video. I want to thank you for watching and uh, don't forget there's also an EIN video on how to, how to prepare your EIN with the IRS and you'll need that before you can do the 2553. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.